this is not my Chinese twin brother. This is Lok Yu. Yesterday we were in Bintong, but this museum was closed. So today we visited before heading off to Nagari Semblan. The museum is housed in Lok Yu's company offices. And uh, in 1897, Lok Yu joined company with Chong Fa Tse and Chao Chun Sung to develop the town and bring investment into the tin mines of the area. And judging by the number of old money boxes on display, it was quite a success. Lock you being among the first to bring cars into the area. In fact, the whole area is full of huge Chinese graveyards and many little Chinese towns. They all look a bit run down nowadays, though. Let's get on with our journey into Negri Semblan. It consisted of nine villages settled in the 15th century by the Minangabau from West Sumatra. And that's why you see uh, these interestingly shaped buildings here. In the 18th century, they suffered attacks by the Bugis from Sulawesi and fell into a civil war. Uh, for a while, all was settled by Raja Meloa from Sumatra, but on his death, the local states constantly fought right up till 1873 when the British took over two of the areas. And by 1897, the whole of the region was under a single British resident. The Mingabao followed the Adet Perpeti that is a matrilineal custom where property is passed from mother to daughter and the 12 tribes don't allow marriage within the tribe. So, as an outsider, I stand a pretty good chance of pulling here. They also follow Islamic cultures, circumcision being one of them. And that must put the fear of God into a young chap. Not to worry though, apparently he is ducked in a cold bath to dull the pain. Remember, Sila Jaga Kabersian. Right, we're at Raja Joma Axe Fortress. He was a Bugis, 1847. He came here and he built this to uh, make sure that his uh, tin mines earned him in a hell of a lot of money. And these are the fortifications all around. Now, Negeri, uh, or Negri, I'm never quite sure how it's pronounced, Negri Semblan uh, is basically Minangabau territory. Roughly speaking, the story here is that Raja Busu of Lupit invited Chinese miners to mine tin in the region in 1815. They were very successful and Raja Busu kept raising taxes until 1834, when they rebelled and burnt down his house, killing him and his family. Meanwhile, Sultan Mohammed Shah of Selangor was in enormous debt from failed tin mines and had given his daughter in marriage to Raja Jama'at from a wealthy Bugis family who paid off his debts. Seeing Luka was up for grabs, Raja Jama'at is sent in to take over and in 1847 builds the fort. Iron. Yes, yeah. So that's why they used to build fort. Bullets and things that find it difficult to penetrate through yeah. because of the high content of iron. Morning, if you come out here, there's a very nice view. The hills on the other side is covered by clouds. Yeah. This is the highest, the highest point for the town. Now it's the, uh, the boogies came from Sulawesi originally in the 18th century and uh, they backed various sultans at one time or other, Raja Kachil being one of those. Uh, if you watch our documentary about the Johor Sultans called The Hidden History of Johor Lama, then you'll 
know all about him. And the biggest they came of these, uh, they went on a sort of an asset stripping campaign around the region and uh, a large number of them settled in Selangor. All goes well and business is restored and even the British are impressed. Captain Macpherson, the resident of Malacca, takes Raja Jamaat's son under his wing and gives him a solid British education. Okay. <laughs> they built this trench. When the enemy comes in, they have to go down, they go up again. Yeah. He uses a lot of energy. Raja Solomon of Negre Semblan never accepted Jamaat's rule and attacked the fort several times without success. But when Raja Bhatt took over, on the death of his father, not even his impressive Arab cavalry can keep order. And Lukut is returned to Negri Sembalan as part of Sungai Ujang. Raja Bhatt, however, goes on to Ceylon Gore, where he has a long and rather successful career on the Selangor Advisory Council, dealing with various economic matters. And he dies in 1916. You're going to build a fort. This is the place to build it, isn't it? Look, rubber trees. And you may think, rubber trees, they must bend a bit, but look, they're quite solid. See, we say they're rubber trees, but really, they're just as wooden as any other tree. <laughs> All those pencils that you've got with a rubber tip at the end. This is where they come from, this. Now, I'm pretty certain that most of you knew that, but I'm gonna patronize all of you people that didn't know that and, and spell it out to you. Rubber is made from latex, which is what you will find creeping out of rubber trees which are not rubber, they're wooden. There you go.